Hey guys, it's me, Pokemon. I'm here to bring you my first episode of the DC Unchained Guide. Now, to start out this, you might notice my voice sounds a bit different. I've actually upgraded my mic. Uh, there's still going to be little quirks to figure out with the mic, but it's definitely going to be of a higher sound quality. So if you notice anything, a mic that needs changed, I can go into the settings and change it. Just let me know down below. This is going to be a learning process, but that shouldn't keep me back from telling you about DC Unchained. So the first episode is going to be about character groupings. Now this is a relatively simple concept, but it will change a lot about how you play the game. It will decide who you manage to buy, who you're going to try to earn first based on where the characters are grouping. It'll tell you what kind of modes a character can run. There's all kinds of interesting things you can tell about a character from how they're grouped up. And that's probably one of the first things you need to know before you hop into DC Unchained. So without further ado, I'm going to tell you all about character groupings. So first up, we have Affinity, and this is going to tell you what kind of characters a character is strong against or weak against. So we have power, speed, and energy. So this doesn't affect what kind of mode a character can run or how they're upgraded, but this will tell you, say you're fighting a speed character, then you might want to be using a power character, and you wouldn't want to use an energy character against a speed character. So it just provides a little bit of rock, paper, scissors into the combat in the game. So this is an important thing to keep in mind when you're building a team, and it can affect how some leaderships work. Some leaderships only work if for power people in the team, or sometimes they only work if everybody in the team has a different affinity. Here I have a picture of some of the characters that fall into each of these classes. Hopefully this should give you an idea of what kind of characters fall into what class. In the power we have Gorilla Grodd, Superman, Ares, so the big people, big punches, slightly slower but do a lot of damage. We have Batman, Flash, and Black Manta in the speed category. Quick attacks, slightly less damage but they'll be moving around a lot more. And then we got energy characters like Silver Banshee, Cyborg, Captain Cold, and these are going to be the characters who utilize ranged attacks. Next we have alignment and a character can either be a hero, a villain, or alliance which is the equivalent of neutral and this determines what kind of content your characters can run. We have a hero campaign and a villain campaign so far so heroes can only run the hero campaign and villain only the villain and then neutral slash alliance characters can run both the campaigns so neutral characters are actually really good to pick up because if you have a strong neutral character they can carry you through both of the campaigns the heroes are pretty straightforward so are the villains but where it gets a little complicated is the alliance there's some characters you wouldn't necessarily consider alliance like uh lex luther they consider him neutral i'd think he's a villain. Uh, I think they try to put one neutral in each of the families, so they kind of stretch it with some of the characters, like Ares, I'd consider him a villain, but he's a neutral. So just keep in mind when you're picking characters that are villains, or whether or not they count as neutral or villain. And finally, we have families, and some examples of families are the Batman family, the Superman family, and the Flash family. And these go on farther, like Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, and hopefully there'll be more in the future, but I don't want to talk too much about the specifics of families, because I imagine these will be rearranged as time goes on, so I'm trying to be as general as possible when I talk about these because for example they have the Batman family and Robin, Batman, Catwoman, Joker, and Harley Quinn fall into it as of this video but what are they going to do once Nightwing comes out and stuff like that like what family is he going to fall into so I don't want to talk too much about families because I imagine in the future when you're watching this video these might not always be exactly how they are right now but what should always stay true is the fact of if a character falls in a family they're going to be using that family's type of card to be upgraded so essentially when you're playing this game you're going to be getting silver cards and gold cards dropping from running missions and you'll find each silver and gold card is a certain family's card it'll be like a batman card or a superman card and if it's a batman silver card then you can only use it on batman characters and the batman characters need that card to be ranked up so you can't use a batman card on a superman character or vice versa so essentially say you want to rank up batman you're going to be hunting for batman cards throughout the game here we have my fully completed flash family some interesting things to note is as of now cyborg falls into the flash family again this might not always stay how it is but but something to keep in mind when you're playing the game is you might not expect some characters to fall into families. Every character falls into a family, so they have to stretch with some characters. Like, as of now, they couldn't do a cyborg family. But maybe in the future, there'll be a Teen Titans family that it falls into. So right now, they're stretching it with him falling into the Flash family. So just keep in mind when you're picking characters what family they fall into. This, as of now, doesn't affect what kind of modes a character can run. But I wouldn't be surprised if in the future, they maybe have certain kinds of missions that only Batman characters could run or stuff like that. So it might not be a bad idea for you to try and get one character from every family if you get the chance. So that's everything you need to know about groupings in DC Unchained. Hopefully this can get you started on knowing everything there is to know about DC Unchained. And if you want to learn more about DC Unchained, feel free to watch the next guide once I get that up. But if you're watching this in the future, it's probably already up. And why don't you try subscribing to the channel? Because I'll be talking all about DC Unchained. And let me tell you guys, this new mic isn't the only surprise I have in store. So once we get that sub bar up to 1,000, I have a couple of other surprises I think you guys would like. So, if you're brand new here, why don't you subscribe? But hey, what do I know about DC Unchained? 
I am just a 16-year-old. Signing off, guys.